All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Patty Ron, and I am joined this morning by my colleagues, Carrie Crailer and Daniel Bird Tobin, and soon a whole bunch of our other wonderful art and science collaborators. Uh, I just want to let you know what today we're talking about. Uh, the Center for Communicating Science has a mission to support scientists and scholars and people in very technical fields learn how to connect across differences, to connect with the broader public. And we use arts techniques to do that. Um, I'm an actor by training, although I am the director of the Center for Communicating Science, so that makes me sound a lot smarter than I actually am. Um, but what we do is we bring arts tools to the needs of scholars and scientists. A couple years ago, we won a very small but substantial for us grants from the Center for Coastal Studies and the Advancing the Human Condition Symposium. And we decided to take that funding and pull it together to support some new innovative projects that would bring scientists, people that identify or that we identified as scientists and scholars, and people that identify or that we identified as artists together in a very intentional process. And to tell us about this process, I'm going to ask Carrie and Daniel to speak a little bit about the necessities that we identified. Carrie. Thank you, Patty. Uh, I'm going to tell a joke because I make my communicating science students tell jokes. And it's really hard. And also, we told jokes in this collaboration incubator that we held with the researchers and artists that we found and pulled together. And it's one of my favorite jokes. It's been a favorite joke of mine since I was a kid. A city slicker was on a drive in the countryside when his car broke down. So he headed down the road on foot to see if he could find help. And ahead of him, he saw something strange. It looked like somebody was holding a pig in his arms. And he got closer, and it was somebody holding a pig in his arms. And the pig was eating apples off an apple tree. So he got up to the guy, and he said, what are you doing? And the farmer said, I am holding this pig in my arms so it can eat apples off the apple tree. And the city slicker said, there are apples all over the ground. And the farmer said, some of them are rotten and there are a lot of yellow jackets. And the farmer said, the pig prefers these ones off the tree. That's why I'm doing this. The city slicker said, isn't this an incredible waste of time? And the farmer said, what's time to a pig? So we had to deal with time. We had to convince 26 people to spend seven hours with us on Zoom in the middle of a pandemic. That was one of our first challenges. And then they had to figure out how to spend time together to develop relationships and develop their collaborations. And we've thought a lot about time. We have, this team, and I think all of them have too. But we didn't just get seven uh, hours of people sitting on Zoom, we did very specific things with that time to help them get to know one another. And I'm going to hand off to Daniel so he can tell us what some of that was. Yeah, thank you all. Um, so in those incubator, in that incubator, we really structured it and used the tools that we use in our workshops, in the Center for Communicating Science workshops, so that it wasn't just, hey, let's put you all together and talk about your work, right? It was a real chance to get to know one another and think about how to make work that is personal, that's spontaneous, that's responsive, and those are key pillars of what we do. And I know one exercise in particular involved talking about childhood, and that led to a real project that resulted with Charles and Vanessa um, that was incredible to see the results of yesterday, and I know that that wouldn't have come about without that key personal work that we were doing in that incubator. And so that was a really fun way of developing and thinking about creating science and art collaborations, not just through thinking about content, but also thinking about how to connect and work together. I think I'm heading over to Patty now. Yeah, in a moment I'm going to bring up some of our um, representatives of our collaborative teams. But in this last year, it was almost a full year ago that we did this SciArt incubator, collaboration incubator. Can you believe it? It's been a year. Unbelievable. These teams have been working together. And through this week, which we're calling Celebrating Communicating Science Week, 
we have seen examples of the work that was generated out of these teams. And it really has been, I have been moved to tears many, many times this week um, to see the great creative work. One of our intentions in SciArt projects is that neither the artist nor the scientist side are privileged. Both are privileged, so that something new is generated out of that collaboration. Because as you know, uh, quite often, we all want the other side to be in service of our clear and important vision. But these teams were actually generating new things. So I'm going to ask now for the representatives to come up. I've asked them to all think about three questions. The first question is, what was most meaningful to you in this collaboration? Second, what might have been challenging to you in this collaboration? And third, what's the future for you or this particular project in terms of, you know, are you going to be taking it on the road and quitting your day jobs? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, I see lots of nodding. <laughs> or will you be interested in doing other SciArt collaborative projects? And I've asked them to focus for about a minute apiece, minute to two minutes, on one or more of those questions. So if you would all please come up and take a turn at the mic and spend a minute or two on that. When these folks are done, I'm going to be rotating through some pictures of their work. And when these folks are done, we will have some time for questions, I think. So let's see. Uh, Jacob Barney is going to go first because right. he has checkers on. <laughs> all right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so th this has probably been one of the most meaningful experiences I've had in my decade here. And I think one of the things I valued the most was spending a lot of time with David. We spent months talking together, figuring out what the nugget was. And we had a few fits and starts. We had some great ideas that we tried to execute that ultimately morphed into this current project. Um, and we've been working on this since last fall, and we are by no means done. Um, in fact, we are working on doing several more of these projections over the summer, and ultimately we look to have one of our events um, at the VT logo just below, uh, between the pylons and Torgerson Bridge in the fall, um, and an evening there. So be on the lookout for that. And I think, you know, the other thing that's been valuable is and David and I have become really good friends in the process. So Can you just say one thing about the project? Just say the name? Or oh, the so, so uh, this is about uh, invasive plants and demonstrating the role of humans and the impact locally. Thanks. So in addition to facilitating the incubator, I also was one of the artists involved in the process. And I worked with Dr. Sweta Banya over in the English department. And her work is focused around natural disasters, in particular, the earthquake in Nepal from a few years ago and Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, and how people responded to those in those moments of crisis. Um, and we had, it was, it was a, there were some challenging moments as we worked on this because I had not been in the same room as Sueta until Monday. Monday we met for lunch when I came down here. Um, and we were doing all these conversations over Zoom, we were chatting about it, I created all these various scripts and they just weren't quite working until finally this l one line from a article that she wrote that was a old Nepali adage just sparkled and suddenly we found this moment of real joy where we collaborated and built this whole audio journey that is really exciting. We're sharing it today at noon, so I hope you all come to that as well. Um, and that was a wonderful opportunity to think about how her work can center around this adage, but also be about the future and going forwards. And I know we're looking towards, we've built this audio journey, and now we're starting to enter conversations about how to think about it from a visual landscape, and how could we represent it so that we can share that as a video online, or different ways of capturing the visuals of it. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm Charles Nichols, and our project was in the Borough of Science, or is in the Borough of Science. And uh, what was wonderful was to work with this diverse team of excellent artists who were really engaged and in incredible science. Uh, Vanessa Diaz is studying how children develop their consciousness and specifically how they uh, develop their uh, ideas of who can be a scientist and whether or not they can be a scientist. So we started by interviewing children and video and audio recording them 
and then we met as a team to talk about what the possibilities were for music, video, and poetry. And the challenge was that there were so many possibilities, but what was wonderful was the team was so engaged in the collaboration, and everybody could contribute. Um, even if they weren't a video artist, we all talked about the video, and even if you weren't a musician, we all talked about the music. And it results in a piece for Ariana to sing, soprano. She, um, Erica set poetry based on the interviews that we did with the children. Zach took the video, and he and I, he created this video, and he and I edited this um, background uh, animation based on the video of the children making their art and his sons recontextualizing their art into other art. Um, I set the poetry that Erica um, created from the interviews and the piece is gonna be performed May 2nd in the recital salon at 6 p.m. if you're interested to hear it. It'll be for soprano accompanied by violin, cello, and marimba. And we're planning, it. I wrote it for two couples, so it'll be portable to tour around and, and present at festivals and conferences. Hi, my name's Rachel Rue. Um, and yes, I was gonna say that I know yeah, the, I the photo the while, <laughs> while Daniel was talking was of, of the project that I worked on, and I worked with Dr. Nina Stark. Um, my background is in dance, and um, Nina is in geotechnical engineering, and the problem that we identified that she came to me with was um, how to help engineers in intense fieldwork settings be more comfortable with close physical proximity and working in really, um, situations that can be really high pressure and, and uncomfortable, right? And how can we use dance um, as a physical embodied practice to help with that problem, to help people become more comfortable in their bodies and close to other people's bodies, right? Especially in this time, in pandemic times when um, we've all been very far apart and um, being close to other bodies feels even more kind of risky and dangerous, right? So um, what we did was we designed a, um, semester-long dance workshop that several of her grad students volunteered to be part of, as you can see this photo. Um, and it was meaningful to me to see, you know, anecdotally, I've always been very aware of the power of dance and movement and touch to be um, a wonderful way to connect people and to um, foster communication. And so it really played out throughout our semester of moving together. We're gonna be presenting on that work um, and we have a, a video that we put together of kind of the whole process of the workshop. And so that's gonna be happening today at 12.30 right here. So you can see more about that. Um, but in terms of future directions, we definitely are excited and I think you know, something that I'm feeling very excited about um, is possibly turning this into more of a portable workshop series that could be not just for engineers, for many other fields, um, using social dance, community dance, and um, choreographic methods to foster cooperation, creativity, and collaborative thinking. I think that's all. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Stephen T. Licardi. Uh, I was working with, uh, ooh, hello, that's a lovely picture. Um, I was working with uh, Ralph Hall, uh, who is a future economic thinker, as he self-identifies, and we worked on a project that we're kind of tentatively calling ping, ping pong omics. So using ping pong to talk about future economic systems, and so specifically community wealth building. And so we, were, we took a couple of these ping pong paddles and we uh, engaged in a kind of visioning process with uh, folks where we imagined what our current economic system looks like and uh, visualized and imagined in an embodied way what our future economic systems could look like. And so we use performance art to you know, complicate our conversations around economics and what is possible. And so um, that's what our project was. What I found particularly meaningful about it is um, I've always wanted to be a scientist, but I don't have the patience for it. Um, and I love the, uh, the idea of working with scientists on whatever their um, project is and thinking about how the arts can uh, further um, advance those projects, particularly how they can be more public facing because so much of science happens sort of in, 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 the, in the, uh, the research room. So, um, so that's what was really meaningful for me. And I think Ralph is just an incredible person to work with. He's open to so many different kinds of things. Um, 
As far as what was challenging, I think what was challenging is taking something so heady and like conceptual as like economics and trying to make it into something that people can like viscerally experience. Uh, and, the, and performance art really helped with that, um, using different theater techniques and whatnot. And so we're in the process right now of uh, working with local government and local um, university representatives here to continue to do these sorts of workshops to think about what is possible, what, what kinds of economic systems we can bring to our local area as well as the larger uh, Virginia area. And we're even considering this um, internationally because there's lots of these conversations happening in parts of the world like the UK uh, and Canada and Australia. So we're kind of looking to expand this and expand what is possible for people. And so we'd love to, I'd love to talk with you all about that and how art can maybe assist in whatever it is that y'all are doing. So thank you for being here. Hello, my name is C. Miranda Sermonek. And my name is Hiromi Okumura. I'm decoration of C, so I just no. uh, um, stand pretty next to No, C. no, Hiromi's the best. And an amazing collaborator. We also have um, Maddie, Samantha, and Emma, who are members of our team, and Emmanuel Frimpong and Eugene Maracas, all part of the Fish and Wildlife Department. And we work on a project that lifts up the beautiful life of a tiny little minnow, minnow fish called the bluehead chub that uses its mouth to pick up petals and create and construct these small nests that become habitats for all kinds of fishes, and Hiromi's demonstrating. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the bluehead chub lives in our backyard, so this amazing team actually conducts their field work in public uh, at Deerfield Trail, which is in Blacksburg. You can Google it. Um, and you can see us in the trail uh, at the end of May, just around Memorial Day, because that's when spawning season happens. Uh, so we'd love for you to join us uh, at our public field site. You can look up Dr. Emmanuel Frimpong and the Frimpong Lab to connect with us. We'd love that. And what's been really meaningful for me about this project is that no idea is too ridiculous. When we come together, it's a party. We laugh so much, we sing together, like spontaneous things happen with one another, and then we embrace them and bring them into our project. So uh, please join us in May, and uh, let's have some fun, and let's learn stuff. Picture of one of the collaborators, the team, one of the teams couldn't be here this morning. This was Urgent Marvels of Coastal Science that paired an aerial artist with a, a coastal engineer, I guess is what she is. Um, but that has been one of, this, this space is perfect, strangely enough, for aerial acrobatics. And she was here yesterday doing her performance uh, last night. Um, so we are now at the conclusion of our what we had kind of ready to say to you and are eager to take any questions that folks have. Phyllis, you're on. Thank you. I love the energy in this, uh, in all of these projects. And so I'm ready for questions. Where, who's got a question? I'll come to you. There's so many. One of the things about communicating is being okay with silence for a minute. Now I have a question. See, I turned away, and then there was. I'll come to you. I'll hold it. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the piece that we saw in the beginning with the projection on the trees? I'm not sure whose it was. Thanks. Jacob and David. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Introduce. What do you want to know? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to take this out of the thing. Um, so we wanted to figure out how to bring awareness and highlight uh, impacts of invasive uh, plants in our region. And we decided to actually highlight invasive plants, like literally highlight them with projections. And so what you saw that image was, was um, what we call Bradford, or commonly known as Bradford pairs, calorie pair, and uh, used a cellular automaton model, um, projected it on there to give this like a sense of invasiveness. Um, then we also projected 
some of the impacts of those species on as well, and we documented this whole thing, and that's gonna be part of an installation um, that will take around be portable that people can encounter in their day-to-day -day lives. Tell them about the VT. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so as it turns out, uh, those VT shrubs that are on campus, there's two of them, one here, one at uh, the other entrance, are made of an invasive uh, ornamental called Japanese barberry. Um, we're working with uh, Virginia Tech facilities and student engagement and campus life to project onto the one that's by the pylons and create an awareness event uh, with the art installation there too. Thank you. What other questions do we have? Holly's got one. So if somebody wanted to get involved with the center, what is the best way for them to do that? Um, our whole philosophy is the philosophy of improvisation, which is yes and. So if you have a, uh, an idea or if you just want to be in a community that is doing kooky, joyful things like this, um, contact me. Uh, Patty Ron, P-R-A-U-N at vt.edu, or Carrie Crailer. I can never remember her email address, but that's what technology's for. Um, <laughs> and we really are um, kind of, Carrie is a full-time employee of the Center for Communicating Science, and I am a part-time employee, and we're, we're the center. We bring in wonderful um, colleagues from elsewhere. Uh, so just contact us, and we'll we'll see if we can generate some money and or some time. Time, that really is the challenging part. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I think there's some other events still in the future. We talked some about a 12 o'clock here and a 12:30 here. I believe there's something tonight. Can you talk about that? Thank you, Phyllis. You are so good at this. Your check is in the mail. Um, so yes, today at 12 and 12.30, we have two more SciArt presentations right here in this amazing Living Learning Center space. And this afternoon at four o'clock, Ellen Kelsey, who is our featured guest, will be having a Friday Friends conversation in this space uh, with her collaborator, Soyan Kem. Um, they work on children's books together and movies together, so that'll happen at four o'clock. And then tonight at 8 o'clock, this is what you really don't want to miss, um, is Ellen Kelsey's talk called Hope Matters. It's about hope and how emotions influence our ability to combat climate change. And uh, she's here because I was in deep despair about six months ago, and I found her at 3 o'clock in the morning on the internet. <laughs> Um, so that's tonight at 8 o'clock at the Moss Art Center. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock is our annual Nutshell Games competition where graduate students have 90 seconds to explain their work in engaging and in exciting ways. We have 30 competitors tomorrow and five of them will win $500. It is really f the highlight of our year every year because it's such a joyful um, exploration of communicating science. So nutshell games tomorrow at the Moss Center. Ellen Kelsey tonight talking about hope and climate change at the Moss Center. And all of these are free and open to the Absolutely public. Absolutely free. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Nutshell, if you all have not been to nutshell games, there is no better way to just take in a lot of new ideas in really accessible ways. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll give my own ad for it. I love the nutshell games. So go, it's gonna be amazing. I, I do have one more thing go before ahead. you close us out, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. I neglected to thank you and Ben and all of ICAT for doing these play dates and for inviting us. This was really, really meaningful and helped us to center what we were gonna be doing this week. So thanks, thanks so much for all of your efforts and expertise. Well, we are so glad to have you. I'm just gonna make sure I haven't Oh, here we go. We have a question online. Let me wrap the text so I can read the whole thing. Google Forms, come on. Uh, tell me, uh, this is from Vicki Corbin in the College of Science. Um, Vicki's often watching with us, so thanks Vicki for being here. What kinds of new scientific findings or ideas came from this collabor these collaborations? And maybe we'll, that's a huge question, so maybe we could take a, a couple. I think we have time for probably two. Since you were on your phone, I'm 
need you to be present. <laughs> So the question was, what kinds of new ideas or scientific findings came from these collaborations? And I think you were talking about a little bit about that this morning when you and I were talking. You, you're welcome to sure. use this mic. Um, what new sci scientific ideas? I think the main thing as so I am a developmental sci sci scientist, and I usually give children questions for them to answer in a close-ended ended fashion. And so um, collaborating with the artist um, allowed me to see how much information I am not capturing by not asking the children open-ended questions, right? Which, of course, are much harder to quantify in statistical manner, which is what I'm used to doing in, in my work. Um, so this just um, allowed me to think of science in a more open-ended way, uh, in a more discovery way, I think, um, and just, yeah, thinking more about what, what, are, the, what are those kinds of, yeah, what, what is all that information that I am not capturing by doing things in the more science way as opposed to in the more artistic way, I think. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to also just quickly say that there was a conversation, thank you, Vanessa, um, there was a conversation that I overheard yesterday that I thought was pretty profound about the way that this project helped one of our scientists consider that science itself, or their science, was not in fact resilient. That it stuck in certain methods that did not allow it to expand. And that this artistic collaboration allowed that person to think much more expansively about methods and approaches. So just riffing off what you just said, Vanessa. Thanks. That is wonderful. I love this this uh, conversation about how we ask questions, which I think is one of the, the big introspective parts of being in science. Um, thank you all. We're at time this morning, so I know we've got a few more donuts, and there's plenty of folks to chat with this morning, so feel free to hang out for a while. I know we've got stuff happening at noon, but you've got a, a few minutes to hang out. So. <laughs> so thank everyone for being here this morning. Let me know if you're here for PDN credit, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.